for starting. Excellent. Well, welcome everyone um, this, to the Planning Board Housing Subcommittee meeting on August 28th. Uh, it is 12.01. I'll probably go to about one when I need to jump off to another meeting. Um, so we'll start just with the roll call uh, attendance. <clears throat> um, so Bruce, are you here? Um, I'm here. Great. Oh, hold Good. On. Here we go. Just Good, well? Yes. Uh... Fred is present. I, uh, Jesse Major, am present. And Karen Winter? I'm present. Great. Thank you. Um, let me just see if anyone's in the audience. Uh, why can't I see that window? Oh, yes, indeed. No, no attendees yet. All right. So we'll see if anyone shows up who wants to join the conversation. That's fine. Um, so, and I don't have any announcements. Anyone else have any announcements for the committee? What's the first agenda item? None from me. Okay. Um, I put together some minutes from our last meeting. Sorry, I sent it to you all pretty in the evening last night. Not sure if you had a chance to look at it. Um, if so, we could vote to approve the minutes. If we're not ready, we can put it off till next time. Uh, it was pretty just general description of our conversations, I thought. So any comments on the minutes? Looks like... Bruce, you're reading them right now, I'm guessing. <laughs> yes, I am. I, I saw the first uh, email that said uh, the, the, that had the agenda and said approval of minutes, and I looked and there was uh, no minutes. But right. then I saw that they came, I just as I joined the meeting, I saw that they came uh, uh, yesterday, and I haven't seen them. I didn't read them, but I it's see fine. the we proposed. Can also, yeah. yeah, we could put it off and approve them next time. It's not a big deal. Uh, I am. Uh, they're they're fairly thorough. I mean, uh, uh, well, they they look thorough. They they're they're, they're lengthy. Um, so, uh, but I think uh, the it covers the basic. Uh, um, I'm happy either way. Okay, uh, Karen or Fred, any uh, discussion or objection to approving them today? I, I think we can approve them. Okay. I agree. All right. Okay. So moved. Excellent. So second. we have a motion. Second. Thank you. Uh, I'll take a vote on approving the minutes from August 15th. Uh, Bruce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Uh, Jesse Major. Aye. And Karen. Aye. Great. Thank you. So those were approved. Um, I see Janet has joined uh, the participants uh, without a, unless there's objection. I would like to bring her over to be part of the discussions. Any objection to that? Great. Janet, I'm bringing you over. <clears throat> um, thank you for having me. I'm I'm actually eating lunch, so I'm going to stay off camera so you can no watch. <laughs> Great. Welcome. Um, okay, so uh, on the agenda first, I wanted us to figure out a fall schedule, or at least uh, an evening, I think, that we're all free to hopefully start having meetings then. I just can't do middays once the semester starts. It gets a little hairy for me. So um, what I was, I had two thoughts about when would be good, uh, obviously subject to all of your thoughts as well. One would be on the alternate Wednesdays, but not planning every alternate, meaning we meet at least once a month, and then we decide if we want to have a second one. The pluses for me on that is it's it's in the regular schedule of my week already because I've already got Wednesday nights blocked pretty much. Yeah. But for me, every second the second Wednesdays of the month is typically a, a a Zoom meeting for our community or some version of a meeting for our community. So I could uh, I could do a meeting a month on the fourth Wednesday. Fourth Wednesday, and then maybe if we want another one, we try and figure out a time. So that, that that's yes, or you can do the second Wednesday without me. Right, um, Karen and Fred, do you have thoughts about that? I I'm a little worried about Wednesdays because I have a a once a month book group, but. It's just once a month and it does alternate. So I, I think I'm fine. I'll fit it in somehow. 
Okay, Brad, what do you think? Yeah, I'm um, looking at my calendar on the computer on my other screen now. Uh, I, I think I can manage the fourth uh, fourth Wednesday. Okay, so we could do that. My, the downside to me of that was I'm sort of liking the frequency of every three weeks, which is a little irregular, but once a month feels almost not enough. Um, okay. So then I was debating, well, maybe we could do, uh, I mean, for me, I could do either Monday or Thursdays evenings or also the other evenings that I have some flexibility. Um, okay. I can't do the first Monday because that's a Habitat uh, build team uh, uh, meeting, uh, which is, um, but of course it's actually it's at six o'clock, but then if we were to do it at eight o'clock, then I wouldn't have any dinner. Yeah. Um, and I guess the real question is, what do you, what are your three thoughts about frequency? Do we feel like once a month with an occasional second is enough, or do we want it to be maybe every three weeks instead? Opinions about that? Uh, I'm I'm good with once a month, but Jesse, you're driving the agenda, so you're the one that's more important about this because it, it's a it's a reflection of the uh, aspiration of the committee. Yeah. Um, uh, Okay, I'm. I guess I'm inclined at least for the fall because that's my busier time, uh, my job. Let's do plan once a month, and then maybe for spring we can reevaluate. Brad, do you want to add to the conversation? Sorry. Well, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, probably once a month, and um, we have to be open to adding an additional meeting if necessary. And I certainly be open to that, but we'll guarantee the fourth Wednesday. Okay, that that sounds fine, unless there's other discussion. And what time on Wednesday? Right, so I'm also, I could, you know, I was thinking maybe you know, 6 to 7.30 as a maybe re more reasonable timeline, or 6 to well, 11, uh, or do yeah. you prefer later? 6, six to 7.30 is right in the middle of, I mean, that's 6 o'clock or shortly thereafter is when I start cooking dinner and then okay. around seven is when we eat. So basically that's the whole of my dinner preparation okay. and eating time. I'm flexible. So what, what time let's have a different proposal. Bruce, what time? Well, I, I starting at seven or seven 30 would work better for okay. me. Um, that's, uh, that's fine. I can do that. Yeah. Uh, Karen and Fred thoughts on timing. Uh, yeah. Seven o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I mean, right. so I, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm busy every night of the week. I can start them at seven. I probably won't be joining until later, just because I'm I'm out of the house. Sure, that's not yep. a problem. Right? Two men um, of the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so different we're houses. Gonna, <laughs> we're gonna say fourth Wednesdays, seven o'clock. We well, yeah. are. Okay, great. Let me just write that down. Okay, thank you all. So I'll follow up with an email with the times, uh, the dates and times. All right. Uh, next on the agenda, oops, lost my window. We have uh, just same language as there before. Um, there were really, the main thing I wanted to go over is what I sent you, which was, um, so I had a couple conversations with other people, not on the, the subcommittee about how we should really try and craft this before we bring it to first the planning board and hopefully the council, the adoption of our definition that we voted on last time. And so I started drafting some other language basically to explain the rationale. And I already found a big mistake that I fixed from the version I sent you, but we can talk about that in a minute. Um, really what, what I'm thinking about is we should make it really clear we don't have an intention of how this information would be used and that it's not, um, that it's just information gathering so that we can have productive discussions about the housing landscape in Amherst, right? Because I think there's clearly gonna be resistance right away to having this definition that it's just gonna be used in a negative way against student rentals, right? So I think whatever we can do to, Preempt that. Okay. I should send you. Uh, uh, I uh, between the uh, to now and the last meeting, our last meeting, I attended uh, an interview session with this uh, uh, the Barrett Planning Group, the uh, Housing uh, Action Plan, 
uh, on that, it was a very interesting, lively, and informed, uh, and somewhat productive, provocative discussion. One of the better short conversations I've been part of participating in, I think. Uh, Pat DeAngelis, uh, Arlen, uh, Pat DeAngelis Town Council, Arlen Terry, who's the principal of Kuhn Riddle, and Tom Reedy, uh, who we see a lot, yep. and myself. And then there were three people from the Barrett, I think. So that was the was fifth, fifth person who I don't know who it was who, who didn't, uh, who I guess apologized. But um, uh, I did what we here suggested because i told you that i was going to be a part of participating in this and i think uh, you all said well you know make sure there's an understanding that uh, uh that the, the student uh, presences are, are, are jeopardizing established uh, the vitality of established neighborhoods i think that was to that effect which which i did um uh the the upshot was that at the end of that meeting, I sent the Barrett Planning Group a, 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 a short email. Nate, did I copy you on that? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a good question. Good point. Um, uh, so I did two things. Uh, uh, one is I wanted to ask a question, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, the second is I wanted to establish that there is a tension here and that reasonable opinion can can spread between a concern that students, uh, because of their transitory nature, uh, regardless of their um, human qualities, are um, have a, have a much more time in contributing to uh, you know, establishing vitality in neighborhoods because because of the churn rate. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this is a town which is a you know where where higher education is the industry of the town. That's our business, and the idea that we should uh, be surprised to have students in our midst is is uh, is something that we shouldn't be surprised about. So that there's a we 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 need to establish a way of being accepting, and but at the other on the other hand we need to recognize this what I just said first. So there's a tension there, mm -hmm. and and the question that arose from that, and this is what I essentially came to realize. I thought I realized after the meeting was somebody must have. Um, done research or maybe multiple uh, people have done research on what is the threshold where student presences begin to irrevocably dis uh, 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 degrade uh, the vitality of a community. And I thought we should know that. So, um, it, uh, so this definition becomes critical to, 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 to that discussion because uh, you have to know what you're talking about if you're dealing with that research. So I think that's uh, so, uh, Jesse. What I was saying is, I'll send you uh, a copy of this short email, which I think will help you with language to establish uh, objectivity and uh, neutrality, and uh, in in the in in as the preamble for. The proposition that we should have a definition Great. this town whose business is students and this university who whilst they do accept responsibility for housing a decent a good proportion they will say better than most there's still eight thousand or so student uh, uh students looking for accommodation in amherst and many of them are you know are organizing them in what we think we want to call or want to define as a certain model of housing and maybe they organize themselves in multiple different ways and some of them would fit a definition and some of them wouldn't but without a definition we haven't got a clue so yeah. i i am thor so thoroughly supportive of the way in which you're approaching this and i but i think uh, i'll send you that but yeah. i thought that preamble might help you understand please the do thank context you. and what it's coming out of yeah that's, that's a good way to view it i um I mean, I it's a, I agree. And it's probably somebody studied that question of if we can find that study. Well, I don't think we have to. I was asking the Barrett people to include it, mm. include that discussion, great, and references in their housing action plan because great. I think the, uh, because I noticed that when I was 
citing a number of the things I discovered, you know, how they were handling housing in Charlottesville as opposed to Newark, as opposed to um, two or three other towns that, that I mentioned by name, there seemed to be uh, an acknowledgement on the part of the facilitator that she and her colleagues already knew what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, if 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 this is a if I'm reading her correctly and she's not just a head nodder, then uh, it seems that they probably would be in a good position to uh, to 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 surface this research for us. Doesn't mean we can't have a shot at it ourselves, but sure, sure, um, great, great, thank you, Bruce, Fred. Um, one of the just to confound this a little bit, one of the uh, an observation I would make is that the uh, the consequence of student housing uh, is uh, very closely related to the way in which that housing is managed. And uh, as uh, someone who has managed student housing for 52 years uh, and without a single third party complaint in that entire time, uh, you know, I can, I can speak to that. And uh, this is an area that uh, the legislature has now handed us a gigantic hot potato that this subcommittee is going to have to take up. And that is the elimination of the most effective manner of uh, managing student housing has now been illegalized for accessory dwelling units, namely owner occupancy. And we are going to have to, and probably this subcommittee have, is going to have to take the lead on amending uh, the ADU parts of our bylaw that conflict with uh, what will become state law in February. So just uh, th this has gotten a, a considerably more difficult in the very recent past. Yes, I, I agree. Um, that was the <clears throat> next so thing. I think I you could fold that into the preamble of your uh... Uh, of, of your uh, approach to the planning board and to the mm -hmm. town beyond. I agree with Fred. Um, yeah, Nate's got his hand up. Yeah, I was going to say that I think staff will be working on the ADU uh, piece. There's, you know, I attended a workshop yesterday. I think there's a few hundred, whether well, it's municipal officials, volunteers there. There's another one next week. Um, Actually, Judy Barrett from the Barrett Planning Group was helping to organize through the Mass APA, and I think she at one point she said over 500 people had registered. But <clears throat> there's a number of little pieces there that um, that need to be worked out. So uh, it was just interesting attending yesterday. Um, yeah. Uh, what I was going to say about the student home definition, I guess my question would be, where does it live? Is it zoning? Is it general bylaw? And then, you know, I think the right the kind of the the sequence of questions or is like, well, how, how will this be used? And what is it, you know, how do we, to me, it's like, how do we even collect the data? I think I emailed Rob uh, more of the building commissioner and a few others today and just said, have, you know, has, has there been any discussion about this in terms of rental registration? Um, and so, uh, you know, just like, just because it's, it'd be really hard to collect. And so, you know, typically zoning doesn't get into occupants, you know, status, uh, and, you know, and so, um, it's just one of those things that it's, it's, I'm, you know, I'm curious, you know, I went and looked at a number of communities, you know, Bruce, I saw in your, um, research, you know, um, um, you know, one place had a student definition, but, you know, like Ithaca, uh, St. Paul, I looked at a few others, none of them really have a kind of a student home definition. Um, there's different ways to, to do it, um, in zoning, but I, I don't know, I, I guess I'm just, curious like where we see this going um you know i could see it saying like now we have a limited you know we have a distance requirement we have some other things but is it you know is this a, a zoning definition really what we're saying it is at first or is it something else 
Yeah, it, it's tricky. I was thinking about that a lot too, Nate. And that, you know, I, I didn't want to tie it to any use, like even a suggestion of a use, because that's where I feel like we'll get resistance, whatever we say, right? Um, the logical gathering spot is the registration. Um, like I was the, wondering. The rental, the rental bylaw. Yeah. Is that um, what it's called? The, the rental it, bylaw? Uh, I don't know officially what it's called. What is the rental yeah. registration part of? Is it part of the housing bylaw? I actually don't know what that's officially called. I thought it had been referred to as the rental bylaw uh, because the CRC had been working on it for over a year. And because I thought that that would probably where it would reside, I thought, well, that's a problem because they've spent months and months uh, refining this thing. And, and the idea that, that we want to add one more thing to it after it's, I don't know whether it's passed, I think it was passed and then it was challenged and uh, by the uh, landlord uh, yeah. uh, lobby. Um, so it's, that's, but that, that would seem to me the place where it lives. But I can see that it's it might not be it it might be uh, <laughs> like trying to get an orphan kid who's got some you know things like bad breath and 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 all sorts of physical uh, uh, unattractiveness is trying to find the that they're going to be adopted by a house that's already got fifteen kids in it. So so it's uh, also what I don't have any idea about. It. Okay, so that's a rental bylaw you're saying. And the registration form, the actual form that landlords have to fill out, are any changes to that required to go through a whole approval process? Or is that just staff deciding, oh, we, we're going to change it this way? Nate, do you know the answer to that? Yeah, so right now the um, the bylaw lives in the general bylaws of the town, and it uh, then sets forth this you know program. And so... Um, you know, it's a self monitoring program at this point, right? Where, you know, an annual form is filled out, but uh, I mean, just, I guess, I guess my question is in like terms of changes, like if the residency or occupant or tenants change or something, do they need to? I meant on the form, if we want right. to add a question, if we want to add a checkbox, student rental, right. not student rental or something, right. whatever, right. Does that have to go through rounds of approval or is that now something the program can decide we need this information just like, I don't know. Do you yeah. have solar? Do you right. have, well, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, no, I think if the definition were adopted and everyone agreed that, you know, then we have it, I think there's way, you know, we'd want to start using it. So I, that'd just be an administrative decision unless there was, you know, we'd want to check with legal counsel, you know, just make sure everything's good. But, you know, for instance, with, um, you know, going to an online permitting system and, you know, we've been adding fields to applications, right? There's not, it's not in a bylaw to do that. But, you know, I think for, as we're trying to get our land use permits online, and I, I'd love to ask, like in mixed use buildings, which we don't collect very clearly, you know, square foot of certain uses, right? Uh, number of parking spaces, like have it all be in a data field that can be then reported out on. Because right now to do a lot of this for um, land use permits and for the residential stuff, you have to actually go through and read every permit and then extract it and put it somewhere. And so to me, the whole point of, having this, some of this information, these definitions is then if we start, right, having checks boxes, you know, we can start collecting it. And after a few years, you can say, here's how we've. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the ideal to me, it would be on that form a required, you have to check one of these boxes for basically what type of occupant somehow defined. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But again, that's not going to happen tomorrow. It's clearly. <laughs> Jan Janet, you've been waiting to add. Um, so I was going to just basically agree is that um, it, you don't need to town council to act to sit to have, um, you know, if you had a three family house or three unit house, um, are there student are are these students, you know, in you know, unit one, two, and three, and the landlords will know this. I mean, every you know, it's just we all know the landlords know this, and so I think it's just a question of collecting the data, and you collect it by making it a question, um. And so, you know, and we could say undergraduate or graduate, you can't do an age kind of thing, but there's, I don't think there's any legal problem at all with just asking the question. Um, it's just, you know, is it in the um, rental, um, you know, the application and you can just say yes. And that, that would be a huge source of information for us to work with, you know. So then, so then if the program 
the the existence of the program. You kind of froze. Are you, you still? Oh, uh oh. Can everyone else see me? Hear me? No, you're fine with me. I think Janet, you froze. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear us. Yes, she's froze. Jesse. Yeah, we. I'm sorry. Oh, you're I... back. You're back. Oh yeah, you were, I, you, you were everybody going. froze. <laughs> so you had a question and yeah. you asked it, and I yes, didn't. Hear. Yes, I was, I was wondering. Okay, if the program, the the, sorry, what's the official name of it? The rental bylaw. Call it rental registration, okay. I guess. <laughs> the rental registration program has been approved. It's in place. So how is this information different from parking spaces? Why can't the program just decide to add this? Yeah, I think, I think that's like, a conversation. Why do, what I'm wondering Robert is, Moore. do we actually need this to be approved? Or do we just need to convince the staff that this is a needed piece of information? Nate, go ahead. That was a question for you, actually. <laughs> yeah, in, in the bylaw, there's definitions. And so I, I really think we would want that definition to be adopted in the bylaw and then, you know, and then a part of the form. I mean, I and it maybe not, but I, that's why I'm, you know, when I... That's the way I was thinking is that, you but, know, we have a bunch of, you know, we call it, we have in the bylaw, we have like a rooming house, lodging house, dwelling unit. We have all these definitions and it would seem strange that we'd have something here, you know, add, add one that isn't in the bylaw, but then asking um, applicants to, to check off. And so to me, we wanted to get in the bylaw. Okay. And, yes. It needs yeah, to have, that, it, that it needs sense. that strength. Uh, yeah, otherwise okay. it's uh, it's like an executive decision of the president as opposed to an act of Congress. It's, it can be wiped out by the next person who's just decides they want to get rid of it. I mean, it's, it's you know, um, I, 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 I can't imagine this path of just getting, you know, I, I know we need to talk about the definition, although it's really clear to any landlord who's an undergraduate, <laughs> A graduate, you know, you don't, it's just asking who your tenants are. You know, when I fill out the census form every year, I list my occupation or lately the lack of it, my husband's occupation. And when my kids were home, they were, they were college students or not. And so I don't know, I, you know, like my thing was, let's just do stuff as easily as possible. If it's, you know, if Rob Moore is willing to add that to the form and we all see the need for it, I know, the CR, some people in the CRC see the need for this. I know people in the town have been talking about this for a long time, but to go to the town council and try to get a majority vote, you know, just seems like that seems like a difficult path. So maybe we should talk to Rob Mora next and see what he thinks about it. Um, also, just getting on the town council agenda could be months. Um, the other thing is, I you know, I don't know if this is a legal. I, I, this is a question for the town um, attorney. Is if we did have some kind of minimum distance or a limit on the percentage of student occupants or whatever, could we do that through the general bylaw? Are we in the zoning bylaw? Because the votes for that are really different. Like the general bylaw would be simple majority. You know, the zoning bylaw is two thirds. And so I, I think that's a really important question that we have to ask the town attorney, you know, because we had to figure out how we're going to get stuff done without like five years going by. Yeah, both, both very good points. And I, I would agree with you that if there was a simpler way to get it on there that didn't need all, a lot of approval, that makes a lot of sense. And we probably do both at the same time anyway. Like, I don't think, even if, yeah, Rob decides, okay, we can just add this, my guess is I still think we might push this through for official definition. You know, Bruce, go ahead. Um. I agree with what you that last sentence. I think it may take longer, but I think it's uh, it's appropriate in this town that this definition was uh, statutorily um, you know, established. Um, uh, I was going to respond to something that uh, you said earlier on, Nate, about uh, enforcements and so forth, and. Uh, I'm rem was reminded of one of the towns I spoke, and I can't remember now which. But um, they uh, they used the definition uh, as or they were maybe heading towards um, using the carrot approach, uh, and they thought that this would there's it was conceivable that uh, or maybe they've done this where um, having student houses registered and having uh, um, uh, tracked and so forth them through multiple years. 
that landlords had a chance to establish a, um, a gold star reputation and that that uh, could be and should be made available or promoted such that the uh, parents you know of students uh, who are looking for accommodations and so forth um that it would mean something or it could be made to mean something that uh, that certain that certain student rentals and certain student land uh, rental landlords uh were um better and, and and better than others so that's another way of of using this uh um using this this definition uh to uh basically the the, the carrot approach to uh so i would need to go into this a little more find out where i found this and maybe talk to the the, the origin a little more because i think it was something that just cropped up in conversation but i uh but i think it's another approach rather than trying to impose uh order although we can decide to do that um, um if we can afford it but there is another way of of, of maximum or of uh, leveraging value from uh yeah. I, from I, don't, I don't disagree i think given, <laughs> given the imbalance of demand and availability it might not stop it might not prevent any rentals from happening right yeah um, it also connects to a comment i was going to make about what fred brought up around the behavior or the management part and I, I, in my mind, they're, they're very, they're two very separate issues. The, just the number of properties that are student rentals and the behavior. And, and I think the first one is even, is to me is even more critical because tapping in what Bruce, you were bringing up, what's the number that tips a town, you know, and, and then the neighborhood's basically lost for families and workers, workforce, right? And I think that's where the, just, just the absolute number is what's most critical in my mind to try and get a handle on. Yeah. And yeah, of course, there'll be behavior problems. But again, I, I would hope we are presenting whatever we're presenting, not about the behavior, because that brings this whole discussion about anti-student, blah, 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 which, which I'm frankly, I'm not, you know? It's really just about preserving our town um, character and neighborhood characters. Uh, Karen, go ahead. Yeah, I could have put my hand down because I was going to say the same thing. What you said, Bruce, that that issue of uh, the density of students in the town and how much is, is, you know, permissible before you tip, that's really crucial. And I agree with Janet. This information is going to be really valuable. In, and I I have a registration, rental registration. If I have to fill out are, are any of these people students, you know, that's such a small thing to add. And once we have the, that information, um, I, I, I think we just need that sooner than, than later. Then a whole lot of other questions become clear and we can argue, you know, about pre preserving uh, the town because it's it's you know there won't be if there are too many well managed student houses we still don't have the kids in school anymore we still don't have the families we still don't the character just changes of a town so I think we just really ought to try to ask Bob Moore if we can just put it on the registration form just a simple thing um, are any of the um, you know, the resident students. And then continue as you are with the definition and all these other things, but that's going to take much longer. Yeah, I do. I, I now, yes, but I do think we need to do both because if it's ever going to be used for any purpose, for any zoning or whatever it comes, there does need to be a definition, or there will be at that point. But yeah, I think I trying to do both is the way to go. Move forward. Yep, uh, Janet. You know, I don't. I forget who said this earlier about like eight thousand students in Amherst. You know that aren't housed by the university. It's closer to like fifteen or sixteen thousand. Because UMass, so. UMass is about thirty thousand students. Um, I mean, I know, and so even if it's twenty eight thousand students, it's only housing about fourteen or fifteen thousand. These people could be in Sunderland. They could be in Hadley. You know, they Lord knows where they could be, but we need to figure out how many are here. 
And um, we need to know that number and what neighbors neighborhoods are hit hard by that. Um, so I think that's just really imperative. And it's it's not I, I, I the second point is, do you think if you came to the town council and said, please adopt this definition of student housing or student rental? And, you know, we could put it in the general bylaw and we can put it in the zoning bylaw. Right. Because we don't really know. But do you think the reaction is going to be? Oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Or are they going to wonder what is it going to be used for? And probably looking for a more specific proposal. Um, can I just, uh, I think, correct Janet for a moment? Sure. Um, what I have here is that the student population is 35,000, uh, that uh, the undergraduate housed on campus is a little over 24,000. No, no, that's not right. It's more. They have fourteen thousand, maybe fifteen thousand be beds right now. And that, yeah, and they well, like to say more than sixty percent, but they never carry count the uh, the graduate students in that number. So, uh, yeah, like the sorry, the student population is twenty four thousand. That's the undergrads. undergrads. Yes. Yes, Undergrad. that's what I meant to say. Yeah, and, and fourteen thousand of those fourteen plus is uh, is what they house on campus. Yes. Yeah, and there's about six thousand graduate students. Yes. Seven thousand eight hundred and fourteen. Oh, there's more. Okay. <laughs> well, this is last time I looked. This is April two thousand. Well, I'm I'm not sure. Well, no, now because... uh, I mean Tony, Tony, uh, Tony, and Nancy brought us fairly recent numbers. I think I think those are the numbers that I put mm -hmm. in here. Um. All right. Any, any case, there's definitely, you know, between brick, six and 10,000 not housed on campus. Yes. Well, yes, it's, 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 uh, I, it's, if, if my numbers are correct, which you're not sure they are, it's 10,000 undergraduates are not housed on campus. Yeah, could and, be I, and I thought that uh, that uh, that's where I got my 8,000 from. I can't remember where I got that because it's not on my table here. Yeah. But that would mean 2,000 were housed in well, Sunderland, basically. Yeah. Um, and, just... Sorry. Anyway, what? Uh, what? I'll I'll get I'll just close this now. That's, okay. Oops. Damn, what did I do? Well, uh, one response to what Janice said, and then Fred, you're up. Um, I was also debating. So after I sent the document to you guys last night, I was thinking about that same question. Okay, when it comes to the council or wherever it needs to go. Everyone's going to say, most people are going to think, okay, what's the point? What is this going to be used for? And I was wondering if we wanted to flip it around, if we're trying to go for definitions and try and define a non student rental, basically, or a, a, use other words. I don't know what the words are, whether it's family or workforce housing, but if defining that is the better way to go, because then it doesn't, I mean, it's, to me, it's pretty transparent, but it might not revoke the same negative responses. Uh, I mean, the real point is we need to define both. We need to define what's a student rental and what's uh, not a student rental, right? And if you do oh. one or the other, you get the same information. Well, I think you have to define, I mean- It'd be a harder it, definition, I think. To what's be not a student rental is everything else. Right. And so <laughs> uh, you would, yeah. so, so you know, you old semantic, folks- This I would, semantics, but I was wondering yeah. if there was a, a better way to do it to evoke less negative responses. That's all. Uh, no, I think we have to. Uh, I think we have to confront the negative responses because the negative responses are the bulk of the problem. Yeah. Um, uh, you yeah. Know, folks who, who who refuse to perhaps or, or don't want to recognize that this is a student town because, like my wife, they grew up here when when the the student the the town was so much smaller i mean the the university was so much smaller and it's not anymore and blah 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 but i think that the other part of this too is we spending time and this could be a housing action plan i didn't mention this uh, strategy, uh item but helping the town um uh helping neighborhoods understand how they can make student presences less and less uh, more and more positive. In other words, uh, you know, recognizing that there that a student presence for various 
in in uh, uh, in alienable reasons is not going to lead to the same level of vitality as a as a as a young family who comes and stays um but still how can the student presence be uh how can how can how can the uh, student rental presence be made to be more and more positive sure i don't i don't disagree again i feel like it's that we with, so that's a that's another strategy that yeah. we can help people with or help us help out help the town with fred yeah uh yeah two observations one is that uh i i i don't want to lose track of a, a simple economic fact and that is that uh uh rental uh the participation of families in rental housing allows families of you know, uh, moderate income, a source of income that allows them to uh, be housed in Amherst that they would not otherwise be able to be housed in this town. This is an expensive town to live in. That certainly has uh, informed my uh, participation in the town for decades. You mean like a two a two unit? Yeah, okay. right. Yeah, well, yeah. accessory or not, uh, yeah. or yeah, yeah multifamily. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the other thing regarding, uh, I, I agree that uh, ultimately it should be defined probably in the rental registration bylaw, but uh, I think there's going to be a lot of pushback on that. Uh, I, and uh, I see no reason why we can't do two things at the same time. We can ask the council to begin a regulatory process of including the definition but we could also ask staff to circulate a questionnaire with the emphasis that participation in this questionnaire is voluntary uh, and uh, ask people to uh, if they are willing to fill out the questionnaire as to which of their uh, rental occupancies qualify under this definition. Uh, and you might get uh, enough participation in that that uh, we can start to get our arms around this, knowing that a an actual formal definition is probably a year off. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree, but at the same time, I think we already have enough info that we would get from volunteering information, to be frank, right? I mean, I don't know if you all remember, one of the first things I brought to the planning board was numbers from the town. And I think we won't get any more accurate than that. Particularly, Fred, I'm sure you were on the, I'm sure maybe we're all on the landlord list that gets all the, here's what the, our attorneys are planning for us emails. And so I'm sure if it's on the reg registration as optional, is this a student rental? they will be strongly advised to not fill that in. So I, I don't think a voluntary thing will get very far. It's not, it wouldn't hurt to do it that way, but I'm also unclear why it would need to be voluntary if, you know, show us your parking plan. That's not voluntary or you, you know, certify you've inspected the house. That's not voluntary. You have to do those things. So again, this is what, I don't know what Rob or the, the program can just decide, but we should just find that out. Uh, Karen, go ahead. Um, I, I like your approach of also studying if, if there is any research out there, uh, what percentage of uh, non, you know, working community needs to be in a uh, in an area for it to stay vital. I know when when we started hearing about the population of, of students going down uh, constantly, the, the number of parents that are living in there, that really alerted a lot of people. So if we focus on, you know, how is the dwindling number of residents that are not temporary residents, how it, is this uh, causing a change in the community, then I agree with you, Jesse, that's not going to evoke the same kind of, oh, they're after students again, because what we're focusing on is mm -hmm. how, what do we need to survive as a town, how much land how many houses do we need to protect if they're all gone if if it becomes well managed you know huge but minority of um 
uh, rentals, student rentals, or just temporary rentals, we've got a, a very different kind of a town. And I think people understand that. And that takes the wind out of the sail of, oh, you don't like students, because we're focusing on the existence sort of of um, of the vitality of the town. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's why, you know, why I tried to frame the beginning rationale with our goal statement that Bruce gave us the first time we, we all met of the, you know, increasing workforce and family housing in town. Um, I, I agree. That's that's the way to sell it, basically. Mm. And, and it's the truth. I mean, it's not. That's yeah, I was going to say the master plan calls for mixed neighborhoods and, mm -hmm. you know, in every possible way. And we all, you know, it's and also like the both the housing plan, housing market study and the production plan all say this has to be managed. The impact of student housing on neighbors, neighborhoods needs to be managed. It's negative. It can be very negative, as we know, and it can be positive if it's just diluted more. And so. Mm -hmm. I think we're implementing already existing plans, um, but I think you're right, Karen. It's like it's it needs a positive thing. It's like we all want, I, you know. I don't think neighborhoods should be economically, you know, kind of, you know, one type of housing and all. I think that's one of the good things about Amherst, is most neighborhoods are mixed, and um, and so I think I think we need to focus on the positive and. I think the landlords people are just going to come at us, but you know, half more than half of us are landlords, and I would fill that out in a heartbeat. Yeah, you know, I I have two students in my house in Somerville, and I have one person making gobs of money, you know, um, you know, professionally, and so I and I you know we all know this, you know, you know, you don't just rent stuff out and say, oh, I hope you have an income, yeah. you know, <laughs> here's the key. Um. Yeah. Jesse, I have to go. I'm sorry. Yeah. This was a difficult yeah. time for me and I I've, I've just that, really found out fine. that I've got to get to Thank so you, I I'll I'll leave but uh I finally in, encourage that uh, that you make a report of this at the next uh, planning yeah. board. We should well, establish that there that this committee has a regular reporting slot. Okay. I was also just going to try and summarize and give us some action items more or less. Yeah. Um because I have to go at one as well. Uh, okay. But Bruce, we'll see you on the 25th, September 25th at 7. Yep. Okay. And I will send us an email as well. Thanks, Bruce. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> what about talking with Rob Mora as an right. actor? So, so that's, I, was, I, I had two two thoughts. Well, three thoughts. One, uh, Nate, I want to ask you, do you want, I'm happy to reach out to Rob uh, unless you want to facilitate that conversation just about can we just add it to the form or does it need approval? Right. Yeah, I mean, I I emailed Rob, um, but I think yeah, Jesse, let's have um, you know, you can meet with myself, Rob, and say Chris. I think it would be good to have have a meeting, so okay. I can um, I can facilitate that. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing, I will continue to work on crafting some language, uh, sort of to propose this whenever it needs to be. If you all have minutes to jot down some sentences, please send them to me, and I'll incorporate. Uh, and uh, revise. I, I you know, and I I didn't bring this. I didn't even try to bring this to planning board yet because I really wanted us to have a well crafted mm -hmm. version. Um, and I don't think we're there yet, even though it feels very slow. But I do think we want to be a little careful because of the pushback we know that's going to happen. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm hearing. Sorry, I'm just I'm you know, so I'm hearing this as like a data point or. Uh... I don't want to say a fact, but you know, it's something that um, is information gathering and not, you know, it's nothing that you know can be used a number of ways. So, yeah, I mean, it's funny. I was when I was as, as during this discussion, I was thinking, you know, nowhere do we define a student. It's in the definition, but um, you know, we've been hesitant to. I don't know if we've been hesitant. I don't know, but it just you know, really rarely do we define student in um, in our bylaws, and so we use the term student. But um, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I, as I read this, I mean, I think it says everything I might need to say unless people want to change it. But I, I think, you know, if you read it, you know, I think the questions could be like, oh, is it one or more? Or how many? But, you know, I think. Oh, you mean the actual definition? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm yeah. the actual definition. Yeah, but I so think it were, says, yeah, I think sorry, it says were, everything it needs to. Yeah, you weren't here for our last meeting. But yeah, yeah, we had sort of, we took it straight from State College and tweaked it a bit. Yeah. We all agreed it was pretty tight. I'm mm -hmm. mostly talking about the like introduction rationale. Like I want yeah. to work on that kind of right. stuff yep. in case that becomes useful at some point. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I was just wondering if, yeah, just, I mean, I'm, 
Rob might have questions about the definition itself, but in terms of the intro, right, I guess, you know, it's like I was thinking, to me, this is like a, a data collection piece that's, you know, yeah. people have asked about and we've really had a hard time um, answering for a long time. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the third thing I was thinking that I'd really love for us to discuss next time we meet and hoping Nate, you can help us with this is about the new change and what, if anything, in the in the governor's uh, amendment, what approaches we might consider to then oh. propose for uh, if there are ways we can try and mitigate the effect we think will happen here, right? For a, for ADUs, yes, for ADUs and the owner occupancy uh, going yeah. away, right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's really interesting. <laughs> I think you know the the workshops will be posted. I think you can watch it. I think most of the and most of the um, half the time from yesterday's workshop was questions and answers, but you know, there are a few attorneys presenting and one is interesting is that if you, the state defines ADU in section seven, and then they said, if for instance, your town has allows ADUs that are bigger than 900 square feet or has something else, they're actually thinking that that's not considered an ADU by the state definition. Maybe you call it like your own, like a large ADU. And all of a sudden you have two ADU definitions in your bylaw because you know, the state is pretty clear, right? So some communities allow an ADU as a certain percentage up to the gross floor area of a home. So if you have a 3,000 square foot home, you could have like a 1,500 square foot ADU. And they're saying this, that is no longer an ADU. So if towns have already permitted these ADUs that are over 900 square feet, they're essentially, they're not, they're not meeting the state definition. And so that was like one little piece where I think right now it's still too early. Um, okay. You know, I think there's, I think there's a lot of questions. People, there are a ton of questions about like pre-existing stuff and what's happening and definitions. And, you know, I think uh, sometimes in its simplicity, you miss a lot, right? So in the legislation, there's a number of questions from that were asked yesterday at the workshop, like what ifs, what if this, how does this be interpreted? And a lot of it is interpretation. And so even within the legal community at the state level, one of the provisions about allowing multiple ADUs on a property is question in terms of, is it allowed? How is it allowed? Can a, you know? So one attorney thought you can't put a cap on the number of ADUs on a single family property. That's mm -hmm. the way the the way the but and other attorneys disagree. And so I just <laughs> so I, I feel like so yeah. is your suggestion that it's just premature for us to really work on it at all? We need to wait. Yeah, I, I think you. I think we could talk about it. Um, but you know, in terms of like the owner occupancy things, I'm not sure. It could be that, for instance, if you the first ADU has to be by right, and maybe that can't be owner occupied. But maybe if there's more than one ADU then you can put a uh, owner occupancy provision. To me, those are the things that you have to start asking because you know the bylaw doesn't necessarily, or the language doesn't address that specifically. So you well, know, like if there's more than one but, ADU on a property, can you require owner occupancy then? You know, but is it is it somehow better to maybe try and talk about and have those things ready to be in place and then yeah, try yeah, and implement them? And then if it goes the other way. We have to take it. We have to remove it, right? Yeah. So I think for the next one, I, I mean, I can try to send out links to some of those workshops and some guidance documents. And then maybe what this housing subcommittee could do is generate other questions we'd want to ask of staff, or we could sure. then forward on to um, town attorney. You know, okay. like this owner occupancy is a question, right? Like, so some people might read it really strictly that it's only that one by right one. And then the single family home can't be owner occupied, but what if you have more than one ADU, can you have some kind of occupancy? I, you know, I, I feel like that's not answered, right? Yeah, gotcha. Jan Janet, go ahead. I would really strongly not wait because, um, you know, so people are talking about what it means and exemptions and this and multiple ADUs and, um, you know, it takes effect in February and then people will test it in court and that could take two or three years. Meanwhile, we could have, you know, people might be going, you know, like the planning, I mean, the ZBA is saying, you know, we don't want to do duplexes if they're packed with students, right? They've been, you know, protecting certain neighborhoods on that. And so this is like a way around that. And um, we have a, we have a, I don't know if it's like 20 or 30 ADUs that suddenly can be shifted, you know, into, you know, student properties and stuff like that. So I think it's kind of, if we wait, you know, maybe nothing will happen. Um, you know, I, I thought we were going to, I mean, to me, we could do is ask through Mindy Dome and Joe Comerford is an exception for Amherst because we're not the communities this is meant at. We are, 
we're zoned so differently and we're so much like more density allowed everywhere. And so can you exempt Amherst? Cause it's going to hit really differently here because of the size of UMass and our community. And so that might be a quick fix, but also I think you could do is if there's a limit on the percentage of students, you know, in, you know, either two, you know, two unit properties, you know, regardless if it's an ADU or a duplex or whatever is around, you know, say 50% limit, and that will just take care of the problem in a way. So I think we need to move ahead and to wait could be, you know, it could be years before they sort this out through various litigation. And Amherst's situation is never going to be like Milton. We're never going to be like all these other communities that don't want, you know, multifamily mm -hmm. houses. We're not that community. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I just want to say, I wasn't saying like, wait, like a year. I was thinking like maybe next time I can send information and it's a general discussion, but a formation of a bylaw maybe waits like two or three months. Like, I, I think, I think it's worth it to try to get something going before February, but, oh, okay. you know, right. I'm just thinking like, I don't, I don't want the subcommittee thinking we're going to jump in writing a bylaw next month. I think, you know, we can have a discussion about it gotcha. and questions and stuff and, you know, start that process and not wait, but not, I don't, you know, like, um, you know, we're hoping. Okay, I, mean, I misunderstood because yeah, I just yeah. pictured the wheels of justice moving very slow. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I, th I think what's going to happen is I think community is going to put stuff out there. I think it's going to be legally tested. Um, the state is hoping to come out with guidance in the next two months, and so um, I think a lot will be happening probably around November, where you know things are starting to get put in print. And so, uh, so the other thing related also to what you brought up, Janet. So I did hear back from Mindy Dom's assistant that. She'd be happy to come talk with us, but I didn't have the fall schedule yet. So I, okay. it's waiting. So I will let them know and ask for her to join us maybe September or October. Um, you course, you know, she's going to be in the library tomorrow at 615, 615 to 8, Mindy Dome. I did not know that. But... <laughs> okay. But I thought, I'd, I mean, even so, we can go prep our questions, but it would be nice for her to get, you know, get some specific attention with us. I think it would be useful. And you're right, Nate, maybe it's better to ask her to come in October after there's been a little more time for this to sort out. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll take that approach. Fred? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to second that. Um, I asked at a prior meeting that uh, we approach uh, Mindy for that reason. And uh, Karen, you're saying she is she's holding at what an office hour or something? Right, in the, right, right. The, in the Woodward Room of the Library from six fifteen to eight on okay. the twenty ninth. Tomorrow, from so tomorrow, six o'clock to eight o'clock uh, tomorrow night. Okay. Okay. I I can't make that, but if someone else could and wants to start the conversation. I, I will. Great. I will try and make it then. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'll try to come to Fred. Okay. All right, um, I've got two more minutes. Any other business we should discuss? Looks like Nate just popped up too. I have a quick update. I finally got the name of somebody at um, the planning department at Ithaca. Hmm. Can answer all my questions, although she's on vacation to September. <laughs> so I have her email, I have her name. And so I, I'm going to just really try to, because they have all sorts of different kind of zoning and regula regulations. And I just want to pick their brains about, you know, Great. what they do and what's worked best and what would you recommend, you know, knowing what you know. So. Okay. Um, I have a silly question for you, Janet, which is, sure. I'm guessing in your world, you're, you're part, you, you've used or are aware of transcription type services. Like um, what, what? Transcription services, like where you pay a company to transcribe a recording or something. Is that are, are you do you know anything about that world like i want someone i'm happy to pay someone to make these minutes i just don't have the time to do it <laughs> like, you know it's funny because i don't know during covid um i can't like zoom does does transcription and it's really yeah, but, we, but we can't just post a transcript we have to have like minutes oh. well right? the thing is i was i was doing minutes for something and i can't remember what it was but it was you know it was it was if you just do it from your notes you can make it very small but right, if you, that's what I did Zoom, this time. you just do a lot of deleting and then you're like, oh, that person's name is really not this. And so yeah. I don't know. Um, I mean, I think in a weird way, it'd be just easier to summer because this is sort of a short meeting with, you know, well, now that Nate's no, it's being recorded, but I did the first one, first meeting and I was told, no, that's not enough. And I was like, well, <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I did this last one and it seemed to be okay. But 
I, I just don't have you know a couple hours to do this each time. Anyway, I gotta run. Karin, last last comment. I was gonna say if it's the summary, I could do it, but if it has to be this complicated thing that you have to listen to the recording, that's another thing. No, I don't I don't think so. Actually, if you're willing to help, I would love that. If you want to just okay. write some summary paragraphs of this conversation and then I'll edit it further, that would be very helpful. I'd yeah, really appreciate it. Could I start next time? Then I'll start writing. Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> yes. Of course, of course, of course. All right. I got to run. Thank you all. Um, September 25th, but I'll see you planning board next week. Okay. Bye. 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 Thanks for having me. Coffee okay. and this <laughs>